Many people assume Viking structures survived because they were built from thick timber, layered turf, and clever joinery. But, you know, the truth is far more interesting. The Vikings didn't have modern waterproofing membranes, synthetic sealants, or chemical coatings. Yet their buildings endured brutal North Atlantic storms, freezing winters, and drenched soil for decades, sometimes even centuries, without collapsing into rot. Archaeologists studying Norse farmsteads in Iceland, Norway, the Faroes, and Greenland consistently find evidence that the Vikings relied on a very particular substance instead of waterproofing. It wasn't exotic. It wasn't mysterious. It was something they created through knowledge, heat, patience, and necessity. And once you understand why it worked, you start to see Viking construction through new eyes. This forgotten material wasn't just a stopgap. It was a core building resource, vital for ship repairs, roofing, tool preservation, and long-term timber maintenance. Modern survivalists, homesteaders, and traditional woodworkers can still use it today with astonishingly effective results. The truth is that Viking builders used tar and pitch as their primary waterproofing substitute. When discussing Viking-era construction, most people focus on joinery, timber choice, and structural design. But the foundation of preservation lay in the use of tar. Pine tar and birch tar were essential materials in Northern Europe long before industrial chemistry existed. This was not a decorative coating. It was a protective skin created from the natural resins locked inside wood itself. Vikings learned to extract these resins through controlled pyrolysis, slow-burning wood in a low-oxygen environment to release the sticky, resinous substances that hardened when cooled. Pine tar was used extensively on ships. The Gokstad ship revealed thick layers of tar that had seeped into the planks, giving them their resilience against salt water. But the same material was just as important for buildings. Roof planks, ridge beams, wall boards, and even the stakes driven into wet soil were sealed using tar. This treatment dramatically slowed the absorption of water, prevented fungal growth, and kept the timber stable in extreme humidity changes. Unlike modern coatings that sit on the surface, tar penetrates. It moves into the grain like oil and becomes part of the wood itself. This treatment, you see, dramatically slowed the absorption of water, prevented fungal growth, and kept the timber stable even in extreme humidity changes. Unlike modern coatings that just sit on the surface, tar actually penetrates. It moves into the grain like oil and, well, becomes part of the wood itself. A modern builder or homesteader can actually reproduce Viking tar in a surprisingly straightforward way. Just take a metal container with a small opening, fill it with pine stumps or resin-rich wood chips, and then place it upside down inside a fire pit. The heat breaks down the wood and, you know, forces the resins to drip out of the container into a collecting vessel. After several hours of steady heat, the thick, dark tar collects at the bottom. Once cooled, it becomes the very same substance Vikings used to weatherproof their world. For small-scale projects, someone can even use commercial pine tar, which is, interestingly, still made in the traditional way in Scandinavia. After several hours of steady heat, the thick, dark tar collects at the bottom. Once cooled, it becomes the same substance Vikings used to weatherproof their world. 
For small-scale projects, someone can even use commercial pine tar, which is still made in the traditional way in Scandinavia. Viking tar was more than a coating. It was a preservative that interacted chemically with wood. What made tar essential was not only its water resistance, but also its ability to bond with the tannins and fibres of northern softwoods. Most Viking structures use pine, spruce, fir or birch, woods that are vulnerable to rot when left untreated. Tar infiltrated the pores, sealing out moisture while allowing the wood to breathe. When supported by regular reapplication, tar wood structures could last generations, even in harsh climates. This is why Norse longhouses featured support posts that remained structurally sound, despite being planted in damp ground. Archaeologists found many of these posts coated with tar before being inserted into post holes. Tar effectively slowed the decomposition process and protected the post from microbial activity. Most Viking structures used pine, spruce, fir or birch, woods that are, you know, vulnerable to rot when left untreated. Tar infiltrated the pores, sealing out moisture while still allowing the wood to breathe. When supported by regular reapplication, tar wood structures could actually last for generations, even in those harsh climates. This is why Norse longhouses featured support posts that remained structurally sound, despite being planted in damp ground. Archaeologists found many of these posts coated with tar before being inserted into post holes. Tar effectively slowed the decomposition process and protected the post from microbial activity. Vikings often combined tar with turf moss wool and birch bark for, well, a layered defence against moisture. Another reason tar was so vital is that it worked alongside other natural materials. Viking roofs, especially those in Norway and the Faroes, frequently use birch bark as the primary water barrier. The bark itself is naturally waterproof, but when coated with tar, it became nearly impervious. The tar-bark combination was layered beneath turf, which added insulation and weight. Rather than relying on a single material, the Vikings built integrated systems. Vikings often combined tar with turf moss wool and birch bark for layered defence against moisture. Another reason tar was so vital is that it worked alongside other natural materials. Viking roofs, especially those in Norway and the Faroes, frequently used birch bark as the primary water barrier. The bark itself is naturally waterproof, but when coated with tar, it became nearly impervious. The tar-bark combination was layered beneath turf, which added insulation and weight. Rather than relying on a single material, the Vikings built integrated systems. The Viking approach to waterproofing reveals their deeper knowledge of nature. They did not rely on a single solution. They understood that wood, bark, soil, wind and water interact as a system. Tar was the heart of that system because it extended the life of every other material. It remains one of the most enduring examples of ancient engineering that honestly still works flawlessly today. If you enjoy deep historical insights and practical survival wisdom rooted in the world of our ancestors, make sure to subscribe to Echoes of Valor. Share this video with fellow enthusiasts and help keep this knowledge alive for those who still value time-tested craftsmanship.